جنبش سبز هفته 54 روزنامه نگار و فعال سیاسی سرشناس اماد دین بابی شش ماه پس از دستگیری در اعتراضات روز آشورا با قید وسیقه از زندان آزاد شد. محمد نوریزاد نویسنده و کارگردان نیست که به دلیل نوشتن نامه هایی به رهبری و انتقاد از وی در آزماه گذشته دستگیر شده بود با قید وسیقه سنگین به مدت یک هفته از زندان آزاد شد. با این حال دست کم هنوز سی و هفت روزنامه نگار دیگر در بند هستند و 19 نفر به قید وسیقه آزاد می باشند. هفته گذشته تالار مولوی به دستور رئیس دانشگاه تهران کلم شد. تالار مولوی یکی از مهمترین مکانهای تمرین و اجرای تئاتر دانشگاهی است که روزانه گروه های زیادی در آنجا به تمرین و اجرا می‌پردازند. تعطیلی این سالن به دنبال طرح مبارزه با بد حجابی صورت گرفته است. لباس شخصی ها و دانشجویان بسیجی در اعتراض به رد لایحه پیشنهادی دولت آقای احمدی نژاد برای انتصاب برشیدگان دولتی در شورای امنای دانشگاه آزاد در مقابل مجلس به اعتراض پرداختند. سخنگوی مجلس علی لاریجانی رفتار این افراد را کینه توزانه و وحنالود خواند. این درگیرها در پی تلاش دولت برای نظارت بر دانشگاه آزاد صورت گرفته و نام انگر شکاف های میان رهبران کشور است. مهدی کرودی که نامه سرباز گفت چرا با توسط به ولایت فقیه تیشه به ریشه قانون اساسی و جمهوری اسلامی برخواست از رأی مردم زده شد؟ به دنبال دیدار وی با میر حسین موسوی، آنها تأصف خود را از حمله به منزل آیت الله سانعی، آیت الله منتظری و همچنین نگرانی خود را از تضعیف قوه مغننه ابراز کردند. هفته گذشته در سالگرد روز سی کم خورداد، مردم تهران و روی پشت بام های خود بابان الله و اکبر از کشت شدگان و دستگیر شدگان این روز یاد کردند. وقتی یه جنبش اجتماعی مثل نهضت سبز اتفاق میفته بسیاری از حوادث تاریخی که در طی 100 سال گذشته اتفاق افتاده اینا دوباره به ذهن ما میاد و ما مرور مجددی از اینا میکنیم به طور قطع کودتای 28 مردادی که از مهمترین حادثه ها و بلکه کابوس های تاریخ معاصر ماست برای بحث در مورد کودتای 28 مرداد و عواقبش در تاریخ معاصر ما ما با آقای استیون کینزر امروز صحبت میکنیم مستر کینزر تانکس فور کایندی اکسپتینگ آر انویتیشن You have written one of the best books on the coup of 1953, thoroughly documented, based on uh, unpublished material. There is an element of uh, historical amnesia, Mr. Kinzer, isn't it? That you, on one hand, there is a democratically elect elected government of Mohammed Mossadegh that you dismantle it, you uh, arrange for a coup, and then you turn around and wonder why people don't have democracy or democratic institutions. That's certainly true. You say that we have amnesia. America is very short-term oriented. Uh, and I think maybe it has to do with the length of our history. Uh, our history is about one-tenth as long as the history of Iran. Uh, when you have 25 centuries of history, uh, the idea that you should think ahead, what is my action today going to mean in 50 years or 100 years, becomes quite logical. When you have a very short history, uh, you don't do that. And also, there's another aspect of America uh, that we sometimes call the can-do mentality. It means that whatever problem is there, we can solve it. And this has been a very positive aspect of American society. It's how we have achieved all the things we have, because we're not daunted by obstacles. But there's a negative side to the can-do mentality. It leads you to think, whatever problems might crop up in the world as a result of our interventions, we'll be able to handle them. We don't need to think them through because we're America and we can do anything. This is very dangerous because although we're good at uh, confronting obstacles that are posed by other people and by technology and by nature, trying to deal with obstacles that are posed by deep-seated cultures that have been hundreds and hundreds of years in formation is not so easy and sometimes we forget that. See, the problem that now we face, Mr. Kinzer, is what is the meaning of all of these historical, as you write, historical issues. As you rightly said, Iranians have a very long-term history, Americans have short-term history. 
But right now, Iran is going through a massive social change. And the question is, what is the impact of this historical conception on Iranians? And you just were in Iran and wrote a wonderful essay that I, that I read in which you argue very cautiously and judiciously that, that the Green Movement is not going to come to any crescendo soon, but it is not over yet. What was your impression when, when you were in Iran? What's your take on where this movement is going? I do think that uh, what's happened over the last year has transformed the, the mentality of people in Iran. And there is an astonishing statistic that 70% of Iranians are under the age of 30. This is probably almost unique in the world. Um, and those young people have learned something that they're not going to forget. Uh, so I do think that as time passes, you're going to see a new Iranian consciousness emerge that's uh, not tied to the Islamic Revolution and that's not angry at the Shah, that's forgotten about the Shah, that's focusing on what's happening right now and their dissatisfaction with it. So although I don't see uh, overt political action, I do see something which is actually more transformative in the long run, which is that from the bottom up, large segments of society are concluding what we have in Iran now is not good enough for us. Iran deserves better than this. We need to be integrated in the world. Iran has always wanted this, and that's what we want now. I see that frustration growing. I think there's a great frustration in Iran that every time you present an Iranian passport, you're seen as a terrorist and that Iran is thought of as a rogue nation. Iranians don't think of themselves this way. This is a country with a huge, very noble history. Iranians are intensely conscious of everything they've achieved in their history, they have a strong sense of themselves, and they are not willing simply to give up because a few people got beaten and imprisoned. Over the long run, we're going to get the change we want as long as the United States can stay patient and not interfere. As long as we let the policy, politics of Iran unfold with their own momentum, ultimately we're going to get the result that everybody wants. Uh, United States in uh, a Security Council was just instrumental in passing in another round of sanction against Iran and uh, uh, there are two aspects. Uh, number one, that how these sanctions are going to hurt ordinary people and number two, are these sanctions a prelude to a military strike? What, what are your uh, takes on that? Um, I'm not against sanctions on moral grounds or on principle, but I'm all about results. And I'm asking myself, what do we expect the sanctions are going to achieve? I don't see an answer to that. If you really believe that these sanctions have the potential to make the regime bow down and say, okay, we surrender, we're giving up everything, we can't stand it anymore, well, that would be a good reason to have sanctions. But nobody believes that's going to happen. So all you're doing is gathering negative uh, emotions towards yourself in Iran without producing any positive result. Now, as for the war versus peace option, I, I share your fear that sanctions, although they are portrayed as part of the peace option, the nonviolent option, are actually the opposite. They're actually part of the war option. And the way that works is this. Everyone knows these sanctions are not going to work. When it finally becomes clear that they don't work, then the people who have always wanted to go to war with Iran will be able to say, oh, we tried everything. We even tried sanctions. Those were the peaceful options. They didn't work. Now we have no alternative but to go to war. And that's why I fear that sanctions are a dangerous sign, not a sign uh, that we're trying to veer away from war, but perhaps the other. The, the danger sign, Mr. Kinzer, ultimately has to do with uh, a balance. Before the last presidential election in June, we thought that national politics doesn't matter. Geo the geopolitics of the region was so overwhelming. The issues in Iraq, in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Palestine, in Lebanon were so overwhelming. The mess that President Obama had inherited were from the previous administration that it was quite a surprise, the world was caught by surprise when the Green Movement started. Do you think the Green Movement has had a catalytic effect on the geopolitics of the region or vice versa? The geopolitics of the region has overwhelmed it. I do think that there's a good reason why uh, video images of the uh, Green Movement demonstrations were not broadcast in many countries in the Arab Middle East. Yeah. It's because those regimes fear that this could happen there. Yeah. Um, most, much of the world, including myself, was quite shocked by the brutality with which those protests were repressed. But to me, the even bigger story was the fact that there were so many protests, that so many millions of Iranians are insisting on their democratic rights. You would never see protests like this in, say, 
Egypt after a stolen election because everybody expects elections to be stolen in Egypt. Uh, you'd never see protests after national elections in Saudi Arabia because there are no national elections in Saudi Arabia. So to me, that protest movement showed how vibrant uh, the democratic society in Iran is. Now, as for its effect on the geopolitics of the region, um, I think what it tells me for the longer term future is that Iran has the potential to emerge as a real democratic society, which actually be quite destabilizing for many Arab governments. Uh, I actually think that under the right circumstances, Iran could vault over Turkey to become the most democratic country in the Middle East. Its society is already very democratic, and it doesn't have some of the drags on democratization like this heavy military role and this ultra-nationalist uh, trend that you have in Turkey. So under the right circumstances, I could easily imagine Iran becoming a more fundamentally democratic country even than Turkey is. Mm -hmm. In anticipation of that uh, possibility, which I share, and being the student of American foreign policy as you are, given the year and a half of President Obama's administration policies and, and uh, posturing towards uh, Iran. How do you anticipate his administration's move over the next year or so? Many Americans are uh, puzzled at why uh, President Obama did not uh, take, make more of an effort to engage Iran. Uh, he only wanted to engage the government on the nuclear issue, not on a broad range of issues that might actually have produced uh, a breakthrough. Um, I don't think that President Obama has ever in his life devoted large amounts of thought to geopolitical and international policy issues. He's never had a job where he had to do that. So I think these are all kind of new issues to him. And finally, I would say, as you suggested, uh, it's still early. Uh, there's still more than two years left on President Obama's term, and it's quite possible he will have another four years. So uh, the suggestions that he sometimes drops, that he's interested in focusing on the Middle East more intently, lead me to think that uh, his uh, lack of drive on this issue up to now may not be permanent. Thank you very much, Mr. Kinsey, for joining us and for the great work you do to enlightening Americans. It's an honor to be on your show. Be well. یکی از مهمترین دستاوردهای ماندگار جنبش سبز خلق خردی جمعی و خلاق در حوزه عمومی است که هیچ حکومت توتالیتری توانایی مبانعت از رشد و شکوفایی آن را نداره. جنبش سبز به نقطه غیر قابل برگشت رسیده نقطه ای که متکی به هیچ نیروی جز ارادی ملی خود مردم ما نیست مردم ایران در سال گذشته و طی سالهای آتی به شرق و غرب عالم دست جدیدی در اراده و عزم یک ملت در جنبش های اجتماعی بری از خشونت داده و خواهند داد من همین دباشی هستم از نیویورک تا هفته سبز دیگه خدا نگهدار